Duration is a concept that you will come across if you take any course in fixed income or that covers fixed income. So let's talk about duration today. So duration is one of the most important risk characteristics of a bond and fixed income managers, particularly those that work in investment grade, it is the number one thing that they are concerned about when they look at their overall portfolio is the duration of the portfolio. The duration simply measures the amount of interest rate risk a portfolio has or a bond has and the way we calculate it and we're going to go through this is duration is measured by the weighted average amount of time it takes to receive the present value of all the future cash flows so I'm going to show you how we calculate this in Excel we'll do a bottoms up method and then we'll do kind of an easier version with built-in Excel functions now Real quick as a review, this is the relationship between a bond price and yield to maturity. So on the bottom axis, we have yields going all the way from 0 to 10%. This is a 30-year bond, 5% semi-annual coupon. You can see on the left-hand side, these are the prices as a percentage of par. So you can imagine a 5% yield to maturity gives you a bond that trades at par. So you can see that 5% you know, gives you a, a bond price that trades at about 100. Now, um, let's say that you've got a bond that sits right here where this black dot is, and the yield to maturity is 3.5%. So currently, the bond price, if you look at the y-axis, it looks like it's around, you know, say, $130. Um, and so your question is, is, well, what happens if yields change? How much is that going to change the price of my bond? Well, you can look at the slope of that point, and because it's a curve, bonds have this weird curve, um, you know, relationship relative to yields. Now, if you look at the very point there, the, the uh, you can draw a tangency there. That is going to be the slope at, at that particular point. And that's really your duration risk, okay? So the estimation of your bond price change, let's say for a 50 basis point decline in rates, are that your bond price will rise, you know, close to about, say, it looks like 140 or so. The reality is, though, is the actual bond price will move to that blue line there, so it'll be slightly different, okay? That difference is a concept that's called convexity. We'll address that in a later video, but for now, we're really concerned about the duration. The duration itself will capture most of the price change and will be a good estimate as to your overall level of risk. So uh, now, here's what we do. It's really important because duration measures, you know, the change in a bond price for a given change in yield to maturity. And so this is what's called the Macaulay duration. The Macaulay duration is kind of step, step one. The percentage change in the bond price, which is on the left-hand side, is simply equal to the duration times the change in one plus the yield to maturity divided by the one plus the yield to maturity. Now, if we just modify this equation a little bit and move this one plus y underneath the d and realize that the change in a constant goes away, you can modify this equation to look like this at the very bottom. Uh, we've got this new duration calculation called the modified duration. This is really what fixed income traders focus on, the modified duration. The modified duration simply takes the duration, the Macaulay duration, and divides it by 1 plus the yield to maturity. And so the percentage change in a bond price is simply going to equal the duration. It's really negative of the duration times the change in yield. So, you know, real simply, think about it this way. Let's say you own a 10-year bond with a modified duration of 8. And again, we're going to calculate that duration in a minute. But let's say you own a 10-year bond that has a modified duration of 8. Let's say interest rates rise by 10 basis points. Well, what does that mean? That means your bond price will change by approximately 80 basis points. Okay, because your uh, duration is 8. So 8 times 10 basis points is 80 basis points. So it gives you a measure of risk and you can see that bonds that have higher durations will have more interest rate sensitivity. So let's look at an Excel example of this. Let's assume that we have a bond that has a yield to maturity of 7%. Let's just call it a, a three-year bond. Let's keep it real simple and it only pays annual coupon payments, not semi-annual. So we're going to keep this real simple. It's a 6% coupon bond and let's calculate this out. Now remember, duration is measured by the weighted average amount of time it takes to receive 
the present value of all these future cash flows. So here are my cash flows in column C, 60, 60. The last year I get another $60 plus I get the $1,000 face value back. What's the present value of each of these? Well, we know how to do that, right? That's simply equal to this $60 payment divided by 1 plus the discount rate, which is going to be the yield to maturity, okay? And I'm going to lock that uh, B1 down, so I'm just going to highlight that, hit Fn F4 on my laptop. That puts dollar signs in front of everything because I'm always going to refer to that yield to maturity. And then I'm going to raise it to, this is kind of funky, but I'm going to raise it to the first power. I'm going to raise it to B6. The reason I'm going to do that, as you'll see next, is now I can just dra drag this down. And so you see here it raises it to B7. Here it raises it to B8. So raises it to the second power, raises it to the third power. So my final payment is 1060 divided by 1 plus the discount rate raised to the third power. These are the present value of all these cash flows. So if I simply add these up, that's going to give me my current bond price. All right. Now, so the price is 973 trades a little bit of a discount. That's because the coupon is less than the yield to maturity. The weight is simply going to be taking these present values and dividing it by the overall present value or the price of the bond. So I'm going to divide, I'm going to take D6 and divide it by D9 here. I'm going to lock down D9, okay, Fn, F4. And now I can drag this down. So I get 5.8% of my present value back after the first year. Excuse me, I messed that up. Having a little bit of clicker issues, or mouse issues. Drag that down. And, you know, just to double check it, I'm going to go over here. And you can see that these weights sum to 100%. So I get 5.8% of my present value back after the first year, 54 back after the second year. And then I get the balance after back at maturity, 88.9%. Now all I do is I take these weights and I multiply them by the time until I get that payment back. So I just take column B times column E. I drag this down. And now the Macaulay duration is simply going to be the summation of these numbers. Okay, so it's 2.83. The modified duration, now remember, we just simply take this number here and we divide it by 1 plus the yield to maturity. That's it. That's the modified duration. So this bond is 2.65 modified duration. So I would estimate for this three-year bond that if you get a 10-year basis point, let's call it increase in the price of the bond, excuse me, in the yield to maturity, a 10 basis point increase in the yield to maturity, the bond price itself it's going to fall by about two, uh, 26 point five basis points. So 2.65 times 10 basis points, 26.5 basis points. So almost a little bit more than a quarter of a percent. That is how you would calculate it doing the bottoms up method. And as you can imagine, that can be a little bit tricky, particularly let's say you get into a 30 year bond with semi-annual coupons. It's a lot of calculations going on. You don't need to do all that. And this is not what fixed income traders do. As you can imagine, there's built-in functions. And so let's just say, let's go to this sheet here. I've got a bond here. This is a 10-year bond. So let's say the settlement date is March 31st, 2024. The maturity date is March 31st, 2034. So it's a 10-year bond. It pays a coupon of 5% and the yield to maturity is four and a quarter. And the coupons are going to be uh, every two, uh, twice, uh, twice a year. So semi-annual. So the Macaulay duration, here is the formula here, but you just go like this to find it. You can go into your summation area up at the top, look for more functions. You can just type in duration, and then it finds a few. It's got duration, modified duration. So this is Macaulay duration. Let's start with that one first. And it kind of just cues you what you need to put in there, settlement, maturity. And I've got all that laid out, as you can see right here. So my settlement's going to be right there, March 31st, 2024. My maturity is going to be March 31st, 2034. The coupon is going to be 5%. And I could type in 5% if I want, but I like to link to my spreadsheet. 
Um, yield to maturity is 4.25%. And the frequency, how many times a year do you get a payment? It's semi-annual, so it's twice a year. Actually, I don't want to type in twice. I want to link to it right here. Let's do it that way. And I hit OK. And my, my Macaulay duration is 8.0583 for a 10-year treasury. Now, uh, let's calculate the Macaulay, the modified duration. That's simply going to be, and because it's semi-annual, this is the one trick here. It would be this number divided by 1 plus the yield to maturity divided by 2. Okay, I'm going to divide it by 2 because it's a semi-annual bond. Okay, It gives me 7.89. Let's verify that here. I can actually calculate the modified duration directly here. Same way as I did before. So let's go like this. Let's go more functions. Let's type in duration. Oh, there it is, modified duration. Everything's going to look exactly like before. It's just behind the scenes it's going to calculate the modified duration. So it's settlement, B2, maturity, B3, coupon, B4, yield of maturity, B5, coupons, frequency, and it's going to be 2. I hit OK. And look at that. It actually matches identically what I calculated over here. 7.8907. Okay. So again, this 10-year bond, that basically means if interest rates fall by, let's say, a percent, a, a percent, I'm going to estimate that my bond price is going to rise by 7.89%. So it's pretty sensitive to changes in interest rates. Okay. So uh, what if I reduce the coupon? Well, let's do an extreme. If I reduce the coupon, let's say I change it all the way to zero. Watch what happens. If I change the coupon to zero, the Macaulay duration goes to the actual maturity of the bond. And that's because I get all of my present values back on that last date of maturity. So the reality is the lower my coupon is, the higher the duration of a bond is going to be. The highest this bond duration can be is 10 because it's a 10-year bond. What if I increase the yield to maturity? Well, let's do that. Let's raise it to, I don't know, 7, 7%. And my durations go down. So higher yield to maturity, lower durations. Lower yield to maturity, higher durations. 4.25%. Let's put that back in. What if, um, what if we, and so I did that right there. So that's good enough. But you can tweak the parameters and kind of get an estimate as to how sensitive duration is to changing of some of the parameter parameters obviously if i increase the maturity the duration is going to go higher let's say it's a 30-year bond 20 let's call it 54 is going to be my maturity date so let's change that and now the now the duration is going to go to 16 and that's about right you would expect today uh 30-year bonds to have a duration of about 16 Okay, so not quite 30 for sure, because a lot of the payments are happening before 30 years. It's only on that 30-year period you get the face value back, but before then you get a lot of coupons before then. So that's good. So let's do one more thing. The last thing the bond portfolio managers care about is, of course, the duration of their overall portfolio. And all you're going to find is that the duration of your portfolio is going to be simply a weighted linear combination of the duration of the underlying bonds. All right. So what that means is let's say you've got a small portfolio of, let's say, $9,700, almost $10,000 in cash. You've invested in three bonds. You put $2,500 in a three-year bond. You put $3,200 into a five-year note. And you put $4,000 into a 10-year note. I'll, I'll use the term terminology notes because they're less than 30 years. Let's say these are the durations that you've calculated already. These are, this is the weight. This is the amount of capital you invested in each of these three bonds. What's the duration of the portfolio? Well, it's just going to be, I'm just going to go right here to the blue area here. I'm just going to go sum product. I'm, and I'm just going to sum up. I'm going to multiply the weights times the durations. And that's going to be it. And so it's just going to be a weighted average of these durations, the weights being determined by the amount of capital I have invested in each bond, and the duration of my portfolio is going to be 5.58 here. 
So that's it. I hope that gives you a good understanding of duration and modified duration and how to use it in a class and how to use it if you go into fixed income business. And I hope uh, one favor here, I hope you subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or please subscribe by clicking in the lower right uh, of the screen to subscribe to the channel because on this page and on this channel, this is where I make finance fun for students.